Kings played some teachers and classes that he used to teach. And I want to tell you about when I first met Ken. I was the age of a CESA student. I was 15. And the band that I had uh, at Cass Tech, um, pretty famous high school in Detroit, opened for Ken's band, Ken and Charles Moore's band, the CJQ. And I was 15. I was playing tenor saxophone. And I was so excited because these guys were my heroes. I heard them play around Detroit. And as soon as we finished, as soon as they finished, I wanted to know what, what they had said about our musicianship and our, our playing. And uh, Ken said that we had done more damage than could be repaired. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell you what Charles said. <laughs> but it inspired me to uh, really work very hard on learning my core changes. <laughs> I think the same day that Charles made that comment, I ran to Grinnell's on the music store downtown Detroit and got a book of chords and uh, I studied them that night and I kept studying them. And, but I really think I owe my career in music to these guys. Um, they were, it was so inspirational. And later, you know, as an adult, I hooked up and talked to them and they were very welcoming. I should say before that, uh, when I was still in high school, uh, we all know Ken is a great musician, but Ed touched on earlier, Ken is an athlete for the arts. Um, he and Charles started a company, the Strata Corporation, and they, they uh, had a venue where they had the greatest uh, musicians in jazz playing in a room smaller than this. It was their ingenuity and invention that made that happen. So I got to hear uh, many, many great musicians, Sam Rivers, Chick Corea, Stanley Cowell, and the great man who spoke right before me. I don't know if you know <laughs> how great that's been in Malton. A lot of you guys love the chameleon. You always talk about chameleon, but he's the tenor saxophonist from that record. <laughs> he also played bass on that. I mean, these are two of the most famous recordings in the history of jazz. But you can see Miles Davis fans in a very controversial and beautiful recording. This is true. That's Benny Malkin's voice again on bass on the dance. So, so through the efforts of, um, of Ken and, and the other guys, um, I got to see people like Benny Malkin playing close up, just completely in awe, talking to uh, Stanley Cowell, also Leon Henderson, Joe Henderson, many, many great musicians. So, this side of Ken is just as important as his music, and uh, you can really say that he embraced all facets of music. Some of the guys around Detroit who played more avant-garde music, more free music, felt uh, kind of isolated and abandoned by the more traditional musicians. Ken embraced them, Ken mentored them. And when we used to rehearse at Ken and Barbara's house, um, it's the only place we had to rehearse where there were hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Barbara always said, I'll spread and rehearse it. I mean, that's unprecedented, right? So uh, I was very sad um, when we started today, but playing this music has uh, revived and rejuvenated me. I'm very honored to be here uh, playing a piano that he once played.
but uh, more importantly, uh, just a quick uh, story to make you laugh. I was a 17-year-old saxophonist, aspiring, and uh, Kenny Cox used to play at the Tunnel Bar in Ann Arbor. Uh, and I would leave out of class uh, from Eastern Michigan, and I'd get on the bus or hitch a ride and go up to the Tunnel Bar. I couldn't get in because I was too young. Kenny Cox would be playing on the bandstand that was located on a ladder high above everything else. And uh, I would go and stand outside and listen to him. And as soon as the uh, club owner would turn his head, Kenny would reach into his pocket and throw me his ID <laughs> so I could get in and hear the great music. Um, uh, Ken and Charles uh, musically raised me. Uh, many, many, many ways, uh, and I'm uh, eternally grateful to them. But most importantly, Barbara Cox used to, as Kamal said, she would fix food when I would go home to Detroit. Uh, that was one of my stops that I always made, and uh, we had nicknames that we called each other. Uh, I called Kenny uh, Elroy, he bought it. And he called me Willie Dynamite. And, Every time we would speak on the phone, I saw you respect. Really back in mind. Uh, I want to thank all of you. Is there anyone who would like to say a few more words about Ken and the little kid from all the program? Associated here, miss him terribly. It's a big hole, and it'll never be filled. 